Here's how Jackie Kennedy's relatives fell from grace and went from riches to a life of handouts. They came from a wealthy family and grew up in the lap of luxury. But eventually, Jackie Kennedy's aunt and cousin had a spectacular fall from grace. And the first lady's relatives would go on to become a subject of fascination because of their unusual lifestyles. Born Jacqueline Lee Bouvier on July 28, 1929, Jackie Kennedy originally came from Southampton, New York. Her mother worked with horses and her father was a successful share broker. She went to Vassar College before transferring to George Washington University, from which she graduated with a degree in French literature in 1951. After completing her studies, Jackie had obtained a job interviewing and photographing inhabitants of Washington. And it was one year following her graduation that she went to a dinner that changed everything. There, Jackie met John F. Kennedy, then a congressman who had grown up in Massachusetts. On September 12, 1953, Jackie Bouvier and John F. Kennedy wed. They welcomed daughter Caroline four years later. And after her husband announced that he was running for president in 1960 Jackie diligently campaigned for him. John F. Kennedy narrowly beat Richard Nixon to the presidency. And three weeks after that, he and Jackie welcomed son John F. Kennedy Jr. The couple were also parents to a son named Patrick who died at two days old, following a premature birth. President Kennedy was not the first of his family to become involved in politics. In fact, at least one member of the Klan was in public office over the course of 64 years. But the Kennedys have dealt with claims of a curse due to their multiple misfortunes. Jackie Kennedy spent much of her time as First Lady restoring the White House, making it worthy of a museum. But her time there was cut short when her husband was assassinated in 1963. The president was killed by Lee Harvey Oswald in Dallas, Texas. Following her husband's death, Jackie Kennedy went on to marry Aristotle Onassis in 1968. But he too died just seven years later. And John's younger brother Robert F. Kennedy, an attorney general turned senator, was also assassinated in 1968. John and Robert Kennedy's brother Joseph and sister Kathleen were both killed prematurely in plane crashes. And John's son JFK Jr. and his wife Carolyn Bissett died in the same way. In addition, Robert's sons David and Michael died from an overdose and a skiing accident respectively. The Kennedys, however, are not the only family with a dark history. Jackie, who, following her second marriage, took the surname Onassis, had an aunt and a cousin, for example, that went from riches to rags. And they became notorious because of it. Born to a wealthy family on October 5, 1895, Edith Ewing Bouvier Beale came from Nutley, New Jersey. Her father, Jackie's grandfather, was an attorney, before he went on to become a judge. Big Edie, as Edith would come to be known, enjoyed music. When the family relocated to New York, Big Edie wasted no time getting stuck into the social milieu. And when she got married in 1917 it was a lavish affair. She tied the knot with Phelan Beale, a law partner who later worked with her father. Big Edie and her husband had three children together. They were named Edith Jr. also known as Little Edie, Phelan Jr. and Bouvier. After their wedding, the married couple bought Grey Gardens, a massive house in East Hampton, Long Island. Here, Big Edie truly embraced her eccentric side. She stood out because she refused to dress in a manner that matched other residents of the East Hampton area. Big Edie also followed her dream of becoming a musician, attempting to master her operatic voice and the piano. Big Edie would perform at modest events. But she had no desire to fit in with or please others. She rejected her inclusion in the social register and her husband eventually started to become humiliated by her. In 1934 Phelan left Edith. Twelve years later, he divorced her from Mexico via telegram. Big Edie was given grey gardens, as well as child support. However, she didn't receive any alimony payments from her ex-husband. Meanwhile, little Edie was making her own mark on society. The first of John Vernou Bouvier Jr.'s ten grandchildren, that also included Jackie Kennedy, little Edie was born on November 7, 1917, in Manhattan. After private schooling, the socialite attended finishing school and made her appearance as a debutante. The younger Edith was naturally gorgeous and John Davis, another cousin, claimed in his book Bouvier's Portrait of an American Family that she was surpassing even the dark charm of Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy. As a result, she attracted plenty of suitors. Little Edie even tried out modeling, which her father did not approve of. 
According to reports, J. Paul Getty and Joe Kennedy Jr. both proposed to Little Edie. She also had relationships with Howard Hughes and one-time Secretary of Interior, Julius Krug. But it has been claimed that her mother warded off potential partners for her daughter because she didn't want to end up alone herself. In 1952 it looked as though Little Edie's dreams of becoming a star could have been about to turn into a reality. Broadway producer Max Gordon believed she had talent and she was asked to try out for the Theatre Guild. However, it was an opportunity that the younger Edith would have to miss. That summer, Big Edie informed her daughter that she would need to return to Grey Gardens to live. She was unwell and did not have the funds to provide for Little Edie in New York. In fact, Big Edie's fortunes had drastically changed a few years earlier. After her husband left her, Big Edie's father provided her with $3,500 annually to help maintain her Hamptons mansion. However, they had an argument in 1942 following her son Bouvier's wedding. Big Edie had shown up late, dressed as an opera singer, and her father was furious. Two days later, he altered his will, and Big Edie's inheritance. This meant that she would receive just $65,000 of his $825,000 fortune. And without money to sustain their glamorous lifestyles, the world of the two Ediths soon began to slip into disarray. Mother and daughter sold their possessions, but their once stunning mansion nonetheless became squalid. Neighbors grew frustrated and called the police, who raided the home in 1971 and found it broke multiple ordinances. After that, Big Edie feared the estate would be taken from her and barely ventured from it. Big Edie and Little Edie shared their home with multiple cats, as well as opossums and raccoons. When health inspectors arrived, they found human waste in the bedrooms and a stack of empty cans that reached five feet high in the dining room. Former handyman Jerry Torre explained that they couldn't afford the private sanitation in East Hampton. In a 2018 interview with Fox News, Torre also remembered the moment Jackie Kennedy Onassis saw Grey Gardens for herself. She had her round dark glasses concealing her face, he said. She took off her glasses in disbelief. I watched her face as she pondered over what she was looking at. Furthermore, Jackie's personal assistant, Kathy McKeon, recalled a time she took a care package to the house at her boss's instruction. Several years after Madame married Onassis, she came to me one day with a list of things to go buy at Jimbles, she wrote in the book Jackie's Girl. The list was long, full of bed linens, comforters, towels and other household items. Mostly things to stay warm. Because of the connection to Jackie, the raid turned into a major media story. And Big Edie and her daughter were facing eviction. However, they managed to avoid losing the home with a little help from their famous family. Together, Jackie and her sister, Lee Rajiville, paid $30,000 to clean up and renovate Grey Gardens. As their aunt and cousin had used up their Bouvier Trust Fund, the money also provided them with an income. And they used part of it to pay off some taxes that were owed. Around the same time, Jackie and Lee had been considering working on a movie about their lives. In preparation for this, the two Ediths were introduced to filmmaking brothers Albert and David Maisels. That project, however, never came to fruition, but the brothers instead decided to create a documentary about the two Ediths. Grey Gardens was released in 1975 and lifted the lid on the surprising lives of Jackie's aunt and cousin and their relationship. One scene shows Little Edie leaving out cat treats for the raccoons, declaring, I've been a subterranean prisoner here for 20 years. At another point, Big Edie tells her, you've had enough fun in your life. The film was made up of several monologues from one or both of the women. And it became a cult favorite, particularly as far as Little Edie's style was concerned. Grey Gardens has inspired many fashion shoots, and celebrity fans apparently included Greta Garbo and Calvin Klein. Upon its release, some people criticized the documentary as being exploitative for showing Big Edie and Little Edie in such an intrusive manner. However, Big Edie did not feel the same way. In 1976 she told an interviewer that the filmmakers were very nice people. Big Edie and her daughter were never paid for the documentary. However, the mother said, it's the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my old age. You know, I'll be 81 in October. Nobody else wanted to take my picture. I'm thrilled. In 1977 Big Edie passed away at the age of 81. She had remained a recluse following the release of Grey Gardens. One year before her death, Edith had experienced a fall that resulted in her declining health. For two more years, little Edie continued to live at Grey Gardens. 
Then, she sold it for $220,000 to owners who agreed not to demolish it. The younger Edith also got a shot in the spotlight with eight performances at the Paradise Room in New York. Meanwhile, Jackie had a successful career following the death of her husband. She worked as an editor at Viking Press, and then Doubleday, until she passed away aged 64 in 1994. She was buried beside President Kennedy and the couple are survived by their daughter Caroline, an author and attorney. Eventually, little Edie settled in Florida and lived off her modest savings. It was there that she was found dead, at the age of 84 in January 2002. She was thought to have passed away five days before her body was discovered. Her two brothers had previously died. Grey Gardens went on to inspire a Broadway musical and an HBO movie starring Jessica Lange and Drew Barrymore. The estate was purchased from Little Edie in the 1970s by journalist and socialite Sally Quinn, who sold it for $15.5 million in December 2017. While the couple who bought the iconic home have remained anonymous, the estate agent dealing with the sale confirmed to WWD that they intended to fix it up. And Tony Mietta, who co-wrote a book about the Ediths with Jerry Torre, says that they will be remembered for living life on their terms, no matter what anyone else thought of them. They refused to live a life that was a lie, he told Fox News in 2018. Even though they were living in squalor, to them they didn't see that. The women just felt like they could finally do what they want. They weren't forced to be debutantes and society matrons. Thank you for watching video.